little words asking what was my reason for tears and I sobbed in despair my Lord is not there is a child it is I that if we just keep our eyes in Jesus, our life becomes so much easier. And, uh, and we will never be the same again. So let's pray. Father, we are here to, to be fed by you, by your word. And we ask you that you speak to us, that as we look at Jesus, we may be transformed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are continuing our series on Jesus, the great I am in the Gospel of John. And uh, we have looked at Jesus as the good shepherd last week. And uh, today we're going to look at Jesus as the resurrection and the life in John chapter 11. And there are many aspects uh, that we could look at this chapter. So it's a uh, powerful chapter in the Bible, and I want to focus on one that for me it's very interesting, important for us. For me, and I think it's the same for you, there are some uh, words that are very difficult to say. Some words that are very difficult to accept, depending on the context. So I have visited people as a pastor and as a family member that I knew it was going to be the last time. And when you're leaving, you know that you're not going to see that person anymore. And then, then you have to say the words, goodbye. So sometimes this difficult word may be forever, never again. And there are a huge list of uh, words that we can think of. And I, I agree with the words of a poet named John Greenleaf Whittier that mentioned that of all sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest are these, it might have been. And as we read the story of Lazarus, his illness, his death, and his resurrection in John chapter 11, we immediately notice those words in the text. 
As we read the story here, we see that Martha was just devastated by the death of his brother, of her brother. And when she heard that Jesus was coming, she just ran to the road to meet Jesus. And she expressed all her suffering, all her disappointment with the words that we have in John chapter 11, verse 21, that says, Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So Martha was always busy. She was always maybe anxious. So we might expect something else from, Mar from Mary, a different reaction. Some people even say that she was more spiritual than Martha, her, her sister. Maybe a little more confident in those moments of pain. But the truth is that she was so depressed because of the death of her brother that she was not even able to leave the house. And when she heard that Jesus was almost there, so then she ran and she went to Jesus and said the same words that we have in verse 32. The same words, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So in those words reveal something about our humanity, our limitations, our suffering, and sometimes even when we question the events of our lives, why things happened the way that they did. And uh, it might not be the same words as Martha and Mary in verse 23 and verse 32 in this chapter. But we say the same things. If you had been here, or if things had been different, or if I had more opportunities in my life, or if my parents had a different way of raising me, if I had not been maybe molested when I was a child, and you name it, you just fill the blank. So there are so many things that you look back with disappointment, with sadness, and we say, if only, if only. But uh, what is powerful about this text is that a few minutes later, Jesus confronted that if of those two sisters with a much more powerful kind of if. When in verse 40 he says, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? If you believe, you see the glory of God. So a strong and hopeful if with which he challenged them to change their perspective. And remember, she was said, this was said by Jesus in the darkest and most difficult and devastating moment, right after Martha was reminding Jesus that uh, her brother was dead for four days. So, and we have those two words. They look like the same, but they are completely different. They spell the same but they are completely different. We have the human if and the divine if. So the most desperate and the most hopeful word side by side in this chapter. And one question that comes out of this text for us is, what if do we want in our lives? The if of sorrow, the if of regret, or the if you believe of God that can change our lives regardless of our past. So jo John here in this chapter, he emphasizes a special, the special relationship that uh, Jesus had with that family, with Martha, with Mary, and with Lazarus. So it seems that their home was the only place where Jesus really felt at home. So staying there, it was more than just a matter of convenience. So Bethany was certainly uh, uh, very close to Jerusalem, about two miles away. But that was not the reason why Jesus was there. That Jesus he stayed, he spent time in their home. Like everyone else, Jesus needed a family togetherness. And it was in that family, more than in his own, 
that 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 need was was met and more than that Jesus had a sincere affection for this family so verse 5 John says now John Jesus loved Martha her sister and Lazarus and it was the existence of this special relationship this love that explains the words used by Martha and Mary when she sent when they sent a messenger to call Jesus in verse 3 the Bible here says Lord behold he whom you love is sick so if you go to the living translate translation it says Lord your dear friend is very sick and when you hear those words and now we see what happens later so we get a little confused so when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick he did something that was probably something that you not expect so John wrote in verse 5 Jesus loved Martha her sister and Lazarus and then verse 6 says when therefore he heard that Lazarus was sick he stayed there in that place two more days so and that is something that sometimes we cannot understand so instead of answering that call for help that petition canceling everything in his agenda and just run immediately to Bethany the Bible says in verse 6 that Jesus took two more days in the place that he was so have you ever had that experience like that that uh, you have prayed maybe expecting some kind of uh, answer for your emergency for that situation and uh, nothing happens so it doesn't make sense so for Jesus to delay two more days but if we pay close attention we will see that he knew what he was doing and he knew really well what he was doing there so think about this so the trip from Bethany to where Jesus was you take a, a day so when Martha and Mary sent that messenger to deliver that imp important crucial message to Jesus you take that messenger one day just to get where Jesus was and then verse 6 says that uh, Jesus stayed there two more days so we have a total of three days and then Jesus started like his walk going to Bethany with his disciples and took him one day to get there the total of four days and then when we look at verse 17 we see something very interesting when Jesus arrived he found Lazarus already buried for four days which means that uh, Jesus knew something not that even the messenger did not know that Lazarus was not just sick he had already he, he had already died that Lazarus probably died a few moments after the messenger left with that very important message to Jesus so Jesus knew that and he intentionally took the time in that city in that place that he was but the question is why it took so long for Jesus to do something for Jesus to leave and go to his friend that he loved so dearly there was a good reason for that so Jesus wanted to take those two sisters in a spiritual journey that you take them from the from blaming others to believing so Jesus wants to do the same thing in our lives so it's so easy to blame others not only for the things that we think that they should be blamed but the things that they should be blamed as well but the thing is that uh, Jesus doesn't want us to focus on that on the past on the traumas but he wants us to believe that he has the power to change the circumstances 
So one of the most serious problems of this kind of human if that we see in this text is that we humans, so many times, we live in the past. And um, we focus on behaviors and facts that have already taken place and therefore cannot be changed. So used this way, this human if fixes our eyes on the unchangeable aspects of the past. And they never lead, lead to anything but worsen the situation that is not good. So they don't help us to break a bad habit or reopen a door that seems closed. They never bring back the lost day. It never restores a broken dream. But it's the opposite. It reinforces the disappointments it left behind. It puts a stop on, on, to the prospect of change and the possibility of a future, a different future. When we focus on the past, we lose the ability to face the realities of the present and the possibilities of the future. So, and... Uh, we do not take into account that even though certain facts, or I would say all the facts of our history, of our past, cannot be changed, our perception of them can. So we can rearrange them. We can see them through different lenses. We can understand them from a different perspective. So the if, the human if is always in the past and freezes the image of life itself. So what Mary and Martha were telling Jesus here was something like this. Lord, if you were here before, if you were here before, everything else would be fine now. So they are focusing on the past. So in Jesus here is trying to find a way for them to change the tense of that perspective he knew that this alone you change the way of seeing things. So the great mistake of our if is that, and of those two sisters, was to omit the presence and power of the living Christ. So, and Jesus wanted them to make them to change from the hopeless past to his powerful presence. And that's why he said, if you believe... And Martha understood that. Martha understood that reality, and she was trying to, uh, like she was struggling with that idea. So much so that when we go to verse 22, we see here that in her conversation with Jesus, she says, but I also know that even now, whatever you ask God for, God will give it to you. Even now. This is a sign of her inner battle to escape the prison of the past to the freedom of the present. But if we keep reading, we're going to see that uh, she doesn't get there yet. So when Jesus tells her, your brother will rise again. So Martha does what many times we do too. So she moves from the sad, hopeless past to a distant time in the future. And she says, I know, verse 24, I know that he will rise again in the last day. So she was saying something like this. Of course, Jesus, if today was the great day of resurrection, I know that he would resurrect today. And after Martha moves from the eve of the past to the eve of the future, it seems that she was, she was struggling with the possibility of something to happen today. The implication of Jesus' words. And that's when Jesus uttered one of the most powerful words in the Bible. One of the most precious and quoted truths that we have in the Bible. When in verse 25 and verse 26 he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? So, and this is Jesus' response to Martha, to Mary, and to those who cling to the tragedies of the past 
and miss the opportunities to live in the present. And that's why Jesus presents himself as the great I am. The great I am. The Gospel of John uses this sentence, I am, seven times. So in each case, Jesus emphasizes a different aspect of himself, but he is always the great I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. I am the resurrection and the life. And one of his statements in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 8, verse 58, Jesus left the crowd amazed when he said, Before Abraham was, I am. So throughout the Bible, God always stands before us as the one who is. The one who is in the present. Not I was, not I will be, but I am. So, and uh, Moses had that great experience of uh, uh, seeing a manifestation of God in the Old Testament when he was in the wilderness and he saw a bush that was burning but not being consumed. And there was something powerful about this. It was to show God's eternal present tense. So a fire that is always burning and never being consumed. In this conversation with Moses, Moses said, if they ask me who you are, what am I going to say? And God said to Moses, tell them I am who I am. I'm not only the God of the past that made all those promises to Jacob, to Isaac, to Abraham, but I am their God. I am here in the present. So, and that's why the word now is the temporal word that appears the most in the Bible. Because the most important time in our lives and the most important moment that God manifests himself to us is today. So, Psalm 46, verse 1. God is the very present refuge in trouble. The very present refuge in trouble. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Here is now the very opportune time. Here is now the day of salvation. So Jesus is the great I am. He is present today. And he is good. And he is wonderful. And he is powerful. And he is willing to redeem, to restore, to heal is starting right now. So to get Martha and Mary out of their if only of the past, Jesus had to free them from their state of subjection of the too late of the past and of the someday of the future. He wanted them to fix their eyes on him, the eternal present tense. And that's why after this I am statement, I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe this, Martha? And at that moment, Martha glimpsed the possibility that Lazarus was not only to resurrect in the last day, but she, he was going to resurrect at that moment. But... Her sincerity did not allow her to declare a faith that she did not have yet. And that's why she said the words that we have in verse 27. Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, that the Son, the Son of God who was to come into the world. So she was now no longer looking at the ifs of the past, the ifs of the future, but now she was fixing her eyes on the mighty presence of Christ, and that created a new level of faith. And a little later, Mary, you do the same, and both you'd be prepared to see the glory of God. God in Jesus resurrecting their brother. Are you ready to see the glory of God? Not tomorrow. 
not in the last day, but what God is doing in our lives today. So believe in his presence, present presence with you. And even if we're still struggling to deal with the ifs of our lives, even if we don't see a solution for all the problems that we have in this world, we can still keep our eyes on Jesus and say the same things that she, she did. Yes, Lord, I don't know what is going to happen. I don't have a solution for everything. But yes, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who has come into the world. So, and, uh, and when that happens... We don't need to look at the past or things that happened. Or not only to the future, but we can have that joy, the abundant life that God has given us for today. Amen. All of you who are streaming online, Pray that you have uh, enjoyed the service and you were blessed, and um, you have a closer walk with Jesus Christ as a result. And we look forward to seeing you sometime right here in our sanctuary in the near future. At this time, we're going to have our closing song, "Because He Lives," 526 in the hymnal. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ because he lives. And because of his life, we have hope. And we are thankful that he's not only alive, but he is life. He is the resurrection and the life. And we can trust and we can believe in you that this is something real for us, not only in the last day not only in the future, but for us today. Father, instead of like looking at the past or looking at the future only, help us to focus on your presence today and be amazed by the wonderful things that you want to do in our lives. 
So thank you so much. Be with us. Bless us and help us to walk with you in his name. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.